Welcome back to the Ubuntu podcast. It's season 10, episode 22, and this is the episode you've all been waiting for. Today we're going to review the EntroWare Apollo laptop and announce the competition that you can enter to win that laptop. We also have some virtual private love and we're going to go over your feedback. I'm Martin and joining me this week are Mark. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Still good. Excellent. Alan, are you there? Hiya. <laughs> That's not Alan. <laughs> I fooled you. Completely convincing that was. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So, what's new with you, Mark? Um, well, I think I probably mentioned a few shows ago that I had been volunteering for a local uh, computing club where we were teaching kids to program on a BBC micro bit. Mm -hmm. Well, I did it again last weekend, and we were um, controlling robot buggies. Micro so bit we, powered buggies. M micro bit power. Micro micro bit driven buggies. Right. Yeah. So, so the kids were like plugging the micro bit into their computer, writing some code, loading it onto the micro bit, and then plugging it into the buggy and then pressing a button and it did their program. So mm. we were uh, we were teaching it, uh, attaching sensors and getting it to do like collision detection and finding a path where it didn't bash into things and so, and stuff like that. It was really cool. How um, old is this group of children? Uh, the, so they do um, some sessions where I think they are um, between... Uh, oh goodness! I'm gonna say sort of nine to no, so, sort of ten to thirteen, and then they do another one which is like fourteen, fifteen. Oh, so okay. I was with the younger groups, right? And so they the little micro bits plug into like an edge connector on the buggy, do they? Yes. Yeah. Right. That's, That's exactly neat. it. And then that was connected up to some like so we we basically gave them the chassis which had the motors and the motor driver attached to the edge connector. And then we gave them some extra bits to wire on. So there was like a switch which they had on an arm, which they blue tacked onto the chassis, so that it, if it drove that into a wall, that sent a, a signal to one of the pins, and then they could make it stop and reverse and turn around a bit and try again, and keep going. And then they attached speakers and got it to make noises when it went in different directions and did stuff you, like that. Did you attach rotating knives and flame flowers and things to these? Uh, not quite that, no. But um, maybe we'll do that next year because mm. Robot Wars is on TV. So uh, so are these kits that you can buy? Because this sounds um, like great stuff to I think there are well. some kits like that. These ones were sort of um, mostly constructed. I think the base chassis they bought and buy, the charity bought them and then added the bits on for actually controlling it with the micro bit. Are the, are the base chassis like a clear plastic thing with two yellow motors on the bottom? It is exactly that. Right. So they're, they're like super cheap, common as muck. You can get them for a few quid on eBay. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're ten a penny. They're, um, they're very cheap and very good for doing exactly that kind of thing. Yeah. It was very good fun and really cool just to see, like, once you once you sort of shown them the basics of how to get it to do something when it runs into a wall, then just watching them go and come up with their own ideas for it to do different things. Brilliant. Awesome. It must be time for the main segment. It must. So uh, we've got another laptop review, but this one's a little bit different from previous laptop reviews um, uh, because for two reasons. One, after this, we're going to announce a competition where you can potentially win the laptop that we're reviewing. Uh, but secondly, it's a bit different because it's actually a very similar laptop to one we've previously reviewed. So in a previous uh, episode, we reviewed, Martin reviewed the uh, tuxedo... tuxedo yeah, Infinity Book Pro 13. That's the badger. So what I've been sent is by Entroware, the Entroware Apollo. Um, and it's the same chassis made by the same people, but it's slightly different. And I would argue better than the tuxedo. Um, How's that? So it arrived in a cardboard box uh, very quickly. Um, I got a message from the guys at Entroware saying, Hey, we want to send you a laptop. And then within a couple of days it arrived. Um, 
and it arrived in an outer cardboard box and then within that there was a bit of a rattling and I thought uh oh this doesn't sound good but actually inside <laughs> there were some uh, pens some Entrowear branded pens and a couple of pads in there um, and then within that there was some uh, packing and an inner box where the laptop was inside in foam insert so it's all very well packed rattling yeah. pens aside um, uh, <laughs> took that out and that's um a nice thin ultrabooky style laptop with a uk power supply and um i opened it up and my first experience was i get an intro wear logo as soon as i turn it on uh you know like the the splash thing as soon as you mm -hmm. turn the computer on i get an intro wear logo which looked quite smart uh booted into the ubuntu setup which had again an a, a an Entroware branded setup thing. And I went through the setup and it was basically vanilla Ubuntu. There's not a lot I can say about that. It was Ubuntu 1704. Um, and I went through the setup process, which I've seen a thousand times before. And that was it. I was done. But I've, as we've, I've as we've learned up. recently, vanilla Ubuntu is a good thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I could just get running. I, it took me just a couple of minutes to, to go through the setup and I was off and running and I copied all my stuff onto it and I, I started using it for work and I found it a very pleasant uh, experience, actually. It's quite a nice little laptop. So there's uh, obviously some things about using a laptop that are personal preference, you know, you, you, and I, I reviewed the same laptop and I had my opinion. So how did you find things like, you know, trackpads and keyboards and things of that nature? So um, I'll rewind if we're talking about the hardware and I'll give okay. you the specs because it's, right. it's an Intel i3, 8 gig of RAM, 128, 120 gig SSD. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's a 13.3 inch matte full HD display with Intel HD graphics, SD card slot that had a rubber plug over it. I did, so I didn't actually test that. Um, uh, headphone jack, speakers, webcam, couple of USB ports, no USB-C. Um, the keyboard has a backlight and I found the keyboard perfectly pleasant to use. It wasn't an IBM Model M keyboard, but it's a laptop. So it was perfectly acceptable to use. Does I it have a it. nipple? Uh, no nipple, just a trackpad. And I found the trackpad no real problem. Um, some of the time I use the trackpad. Sometimes I plugged in a dongle and used an external mouse, but that's just my personal preference. Um, it seemed like quite a nice feeling laptop to use i carried it around it was very light i didn't i didn't mm -hmm. feel like i was carrying around something bulky uh so i was carrying it around the house moving up and down the stairs sitting on the sofa sitting on the table so it felt like quite a pleasant experience to use to use the laptop um and how did you find like um battery endurance and fan noise and those sorts of things so i did the usual stuff the power top calibrate and um, I tried some tests of letting it run down. Uh, so I, I fully charged it, logged it in, and then pulled the power cable out with the brightness at 40% screen on. Doing nothing much, it lasted for five and a half hours. So uh -huh. that that was like doing nothing. Wi-Fi was on, but it was doing nothing. Uh, when the screen was on, on the lowest brightness, which was still perfectly visible, it lasted for about seven hours. So I would say somewhere between five and seven hours for mm -hmm. normal usage, depending upon your you know, your usage patterns. I didn't find the fan particularly noisy. Um, it only really span up when I was doing some really super intensive stuff. Nothing yeah. like well, bad. Uh, Entroware um, contacted me about that. They're, they're carrying a newer revision of the EC firmware that has better thermal and fan management, which is why... I think we're seeing a couple of things there, which is lower fan noise and Im slightly improved battery endurance. Good. And that, and that was noticeable. Like all the negative things you said about the tuxedo, I didn't really notice on this. Mm -hmm. It was, it, the battery was fine. Um, took about two hours to charge from completely empty while the laptop was switched on. So it's, it's not a super high capacity charger. Mm -hmm. It's only a 37 watt hour battery so it's not a super high capacity battery so you know you get what you pay for mm. um uh, and in the box you just get the laptop and the power supply and the pens and pads that i got and there was a little uh cellophane bag with the uh, the details you know the intro where details warranty stuff and like documentation 
but that was about it really um i i tested a few things i tried i upgraded it from 1704 to 1710 to make sure i could upgrade and everything carried on working um i tried suspend and resume uh, i tried leaving it in suspend for a long time and it lasted hours and hours and hours more than i could measure yeah um it was a very pleasant laptop to use if i was in the market for something like that um something that i could carry around and do my daily work on and you know it would be perfectly acceptable for me to do my my mm. job on that laptop mm. so um, you'd you would buy it uh if i i personally wouldn't buy it, but i would certainly it would be on my list of laptops mm. to recommend would you enter a competition to win it <laughs> do you know what i certainly would uh by the way i should mention uh the spec that i got uh was 570 british pounds <laughs> at today's money uh not including vat 685 including vat right. so that's that's the spec that i had and the price that i had and the spec that we're giving away and indeed we are going to give it away so should we move on to uh have you, have you guys got any more questions about the the laptop i don't think so because the i think most other things are, are fairly similar and and that's well understood yeah so if you if you do want to know more about this type of the hardware then you could go back and listen to the tuxedo it's very similar yep. but bear in mind that this thing does have newer firmware so it the battery endurance seems yeah um, and it better. also doesn't it doesn't have the thunderbolt features enabled as well which um, is another change that entroware have made right but the key thing is it's stock ubuntu that it should it's be stock ubuntu it just which, was which was i was happy with so yeah we're going to give this thing away um and we we do these contests now and again and w we try and make the contests uh, interesting and creative and not just you know answer a question or something something stupid like that so we come up with something that kind of followed on from our event that we did at frost talk live a few weeks ago where we had a little contest where i asked martin and mark to create a program using only 20 lines of code and following on from that we thought we'd reuse that theme and ask you to create something with this 20 in mind but it's not just 20 lines of code so do you guys want to go through the the criteria for entering okay. this, this I'll, thing? I'll start with the first one um create something interesting in 20 lines of code and stick it in github or in a gist or on launchpad or you could write some prose a poem a short story or other written work in the length of 20 tweets and you can post it on your blog, or if you don't have a blog, stick it on bold.io. Or you could compose some music or create an audio project that's 20 seconds long and post it to your favourite audio sharing site. Or you could draw a picture or take a photograph using only 20 colours, lines or shapes and share it via an image sharing site. Or you could produce a 20 second video and share it via YouTube or Vimeo or Twitch. So we're not like super restrictive about where you share this thing these are yeah, just suggestions just suggestions yeah it's it's more we want you to create 20 lines of something 20 seconds of something 20 colors um and put it out there and put it out there so we want people to be creative and um send it to us and uh there's some more details about how you enter and um how you send it to us and when the contest finishes and all the rules for entry and they are you should email your entry to show at ubuntupodcast.org. So when you say when you say email your entry, if it's an online resource like Vimeo or yeah, YouTube, just or something, send just email a link to email wherever it is. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. If it's twenty lines of code or twenty lines of a poem, you could just paste that into. The you could paste it or attach it, but yeah, yeah. ideally, ideally, we want it, you want to put this out somewhere on the internet because yeah. what we'd also like to do is then share those. Uh, in the show and on our social feeds so if you can um, license them freely that would help us do that so the deadline for entries is the 3rd of september 2017 uh, which will allow us to announce the winner in our 300th episode which will go out on september the 7th so uh look out for that extravaganza where we'll be announcing the winner <laughs> you really shouldn't use superlatives I <laughs> 
<laughs> I do like an extravaganza. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, set your expectations for what an extravaganza is accordingly. Um, we're going to ship the laptop to the countries that Entraware ship to. So that's UK, Ireland, Spain, France, and Germany. And I, Italy. I, did I not say Italy? I think you missed Italy. Oh, sorry, Italy. Uh, so, to be clear, UK, Ireland, Spain, Italy, France, and Germany. And... Like, we apologize if you live outside of any of those countries, but, you know, there's a limit to how much we can spend on shipping and logistics and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, note, this is a fixed spec, so we can't change the laptop. It's already been sent to me. I have reflashed it back to the original image. I took an image of it before I touched it, and I've put back on there what came from Entraware. So what you'll get out of the box is the out-of-box experience you get from Entraware, and I've cleaned it all up. It's not got my grubby fingerprints all over it, and I've put it back in the box. So it's a almost as new experience you should get with this laptop, if you win it. <laughs> Good so, luck, everyone. Yeah, so we'll put all these details on uh, the show notes for this episode, but you need to get moving because the deadline is, as Mark yes. said, September the 3rd. Oh, and we should probably say that we will be choosing the winner based on the one that is our favourite. Yes. Yes. Yes, there's no special points or anything. Uh, you know, if you did tweet it to us and tweeted to Entroware, then that wouldn't gain you any points. They would love you and we would love you, but that won't gain you, gain you any extra points. But If uh, if you mention Ubuntu Mate, you'll totally get extra points. <laughs> <laughs> if you mention Ubuntu Mate, I will deduct twice as many yeah. points as Mate. Two, two against one, you will not get points for mentioning Ubuntu Mate. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh dear. Have we covered all the details there? <laughs> I think we I think have. We'll yeah. we'll remind everyone in the next Yes, uh, and if anyone episode. does have any questions, we can address them in the feedback of the next show. Or you could join our Telegram group, Ubuntu Podcast.org slash Telegram and ask your questions there. Yes. Are you looking after your bits? If you are, help your fellow listeners keep their bits safe too. If there's a VPN or privacy service that you've found useful, email your virtual private love to show at ubuntupodcast.org. And it is time for some virtual private love. And this week, my virtual private love is Opera VPN. Um, in fact, I, I've mostly been using this on my Android phone. Um, but it's now become my sort of go-to VPN client when I'm connecting to public Wi-Fi or if I'm geo-blocked from stuff. Uh, and it has a number of very um, appealing characteristics, not least it being free to use and having unlimited um, um, bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So is it um, uh, is it like throttled in terms of speed being free or is it still fairly snappy? Not that I've been able to determine because I've usually been on some ropey Wi-Fi somewhere <laughs> right. when I've been using yeah. it. So I think I'm constrained by that rather than what the VPN can do. So I, I've not done a speed test. It's right. always worked fine as far as I can tell. So I too have used Opera VPN on my Android device and there are only two circumstances where I've where I've used it. Uh, so in addition to the ones that you've suggested of being on public Wi-Fi and, and unblocking, geo-blocking, one was... Um, in order in the UK and in the EU, Google Photos doesn't do face recognition. But if you join a VPN and switch it to the US, uh, you, which you can do with Opera VPN, and then close and reopen Google Photos, you can then <laughs> enable the face recognition thing. And once you enable it on your account, you can then use it in the UK and Europe, uh, which is good. Sneaky tip. Yep. And the other one I used. <laughs> I, th I thought this was supposed to enhance your privacy. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah well no it's photos of other people but it's no, it's not me <laughs> photos of me it's looking at faces of other people not me okay so good. that's fine that's fine then yeah uh and the other one was uh my one plus one they they deliver yeah. firmware updates in a regional way so i sometimes use opera vpn to say that i'm in canada and as soon as i say i'm in canada my phone suddenly says you have an over-the-air update for your phone and so i do that to unlock over-the-air updates faster yeah. so so I've tried using VPN apps on my phone before, and I found that they basically sap the battery uh, far, right. far quicker than they sap my bandwidth. So how is Opera VPN for battery the, this usage? This is the main reason why I use it. I, so I, I used to use Lantern. Um, yeah. I'm, I've got a Lantern subscription, but that was really thirsty on the battery. And I've not 
being able to notice anything on Opera VPN that seems to be adding any battery um, overhead that I can discern. And I've got um, wow, Android 711 really on my phone now, and that actually prompts you when batteries are using lots of, when apps are using lots of battery. And yeah. it's never prompted me when I've been using Opera VPN, even for extended periods. So well, I'm going to say I don't think it uses very much. And another thing about the Opera VPN is if you're using the desktop Opera browser, it's available in that too, is. which is a really yeah. good thing if you want to recommend to a friend or family who's not massively tech savvy to use a yeah. VPN, then this is a really easy way for them to do it because it's basically just a button in the browser toolbar yeah. that switches sort it on. Where you'd see the padlock normally in the, yeah. in the secure URL, there's a VPN button. And also if you turn it on, it's persistent. So you turn it on and it stays on. And that's why I have Opera installed on my machine, because occasionally you see a link on Twitter to something John Oliver's done and you get geo blocked. So you just open that link in Opera and say you're in America. Problem solved. Uh, pro tip for John Oliver. Uh, when it when it says geo blocked on YouTube, just go to his Facebook page because it's not geo blocked there. Oh, right, you can watch okay. it on Facebook if you don't mind Facebook. Anyway. Yeah. Excellent VPN tips there. Thank you, Martin. We love getting your feedback. If you've got a comment about something you hear on the show, why don't you drop us an email on show at ubuntupodcast.org. And now it's time for your wonderful feedback. And first up, Robert Orzana emailed us to show at ubuntupodcast.org. He says, you don't accept need financial donations. How can one, I, best support the show? I love it when people put extra words in brackets. It really makes it fun. Uh, no, we don't ask for donations. Um, we personally uh, have wrestled with this for uh, for the nearly 10 years that we've been doing this, and we, we've always come down on the side that we don't want to do that. Um that may change in the future. Who knows? But yeah. ways in which you could support us uh, in your podcast client, uh, you could rate us, uh, rate the show, uh, preferably a high rating <laughs> rather than a <laughs> low one. Um, so if you're in iTunes, you can rate it in iTunes. Pocket Casts has a little star button. And I'm sure most other things like Gpodder and so on have their ways of rating. If you do use a podcast client that we don't know about, that we've you've never heard us mention, let us know. And tell us how you can rate things in that podcast client so we can tell other people who use that podcast client. Um, mm. here's, here's a little encouragement for you as well. If you're an iTunes user, there are two reviews for the Ubuntu <laughs> podcast in iTunes. One of them is from my mum. So if you want to go there, <laughs> you, you, your challenge is to figure out which one was posted by my mum. And whilst you're there, write one of your own and give us lots of stars, please. <laughs> excellent the other thing you could do is share with your linux loving friends so yes whether and not even your linux loving media. friends just your tech loving friends will do yes that's true yes and of course if you just listen to what laura asks you to do on every show um that will help us immensely yes next up pa moberg emailed us with regard to the Intel microcode fail and the Talos Secure Workstation funding fail, as an Amiga fan, I can tell you that the new PowerPC hardware exists for you to purchase. Since Amiga OS 4 and later is PowerPC uh, only, there are new motherboards with PowerPC processors on them. I think that this is a perfect place to start on an open hardware platform since it is targeted on both the Amiga community the open source community and the security minded community. Yes, there's only so I'm familiar with some of these boards because for a while there were a number of people in the Ubuntu Mate community who were running some of these Amiga boards, the um, uh, Aeon uh, devices. But unfortunately, with Ubuntu pulling PowerPC support and it's not a release architecture for Debian now, it's becoming increasingly harder to find. Power PC distributions that you can run on these um, these Amigas, um, but they are good if uh, if you're a fan. They're, they're very compelling. Is there still was it Yellow Dog Linux, the one that ran on the oh, uh, PS3 or something? Uh, yeah, I mean there are there are newer versions. I mean you can get Ubuntu 16 or Ubuntu Mate 1604 and Ubuntu 1604, for example, that will run on these um, workstations just fine. Oh, okay, cool. 
Next up, Sam VDE left a comment on our website. And it's a big one. Martin asked the audience about the message that was given by Colonical with respect to them withdrawing from the mobile marketplace. I want to reply because I think there's a big problem in Linux. I think the message from Mark Shuttleworth was a bit vague, but simple in the end. In inverted commas, we withdrew from mobile and convergence. We still want to be invested in shipping the best desktop OS, end quote. And it seems what we'll get is exactly that. No news there. What we then saw, unfortunately, were a lot of podcasters and news sites, big and small, jumping on this like maniacs, being extremely vocal and loud in giving their version of the intentions of Canonical and spreading FUD that the Ubuntu desktop was now officially dead. I've mentioned it several times in the past, and I still consider this extremely poor quality of coverage of Linux news damaging to the larger ecosystem. Give facts and opinion, but don't present the opinion as fact. It's not that hard, really. As to System76, I sincerely hope Canonical had the insight of discussing this strategic decision and especially the element of uncertainty it brings with their most important partners beforehand. If not, I would conclude someone dropped the ball big time. Or indeed, System76 is not that important to Canonical after all. Good points. Nice one, Sam. Mm. Alice in Wondermall left a comment on our subreddit r slash Ubuntu podcast. Regarding the uncertainty thing with GNOME for Ubuntu, I feel like they don't explain why GNOME or what they will actually do with it. But also, if you're going to upgrade, explain why not KDE. KDE is great, but from Canonical's communication, it looks like they didn't consider anything but GNOME. With that said, I don't actually care. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, (laughs) Thanks. Um, So... I I know lots of different desktops were considered. Um, all of them. All of the ones you know about, and maybe more you don't. They were all considered, and the decision was made strategically to go with GNOME. So don't think That's that because know. we chose GNOME, it was just a you know default position, choose GNOME. There was plenty of agonizing and discussion and thoughts about what the best thing to do Given that Canonical is a privately held company and there's someone who pays for the developer's time to work on this stuff, um, it was a strategic internal decision to choose GNOME. Great. Thank you for that insight. Um, Next up, Ninja Aaron left a comment on our subreddit as well. My computer at work has only four gigabytes of RAM. I was running a browser with two tabs, Wire and Thunderbird, and ran out of RAM. Granted, the browser was taking 56% of it. (laughs) I think this is the problem with Google Translate. I'm an American working in Germany on Hebrew stuff, so I need that a lot. Still, Wire was using 560 meg, and Thunderbird, which is also some kind of web runtime, was using 460 meg. Hmm. I, quite, but yeah. I agree that it's great that apps can go cross-platform and come to Linux, but Jeepers is a thing called Cute, and it doesn't have this problem. Mm, fair point. Yeah. yeah, see a conversation we had last week about uh, Electra. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ahmed Lamine left a comment on our website. Thanks for all the awesome episodes. Thanks, Ahmed. For those who want to get new podcast episodes delivered directly to their email, you can subscribe by email from blueberry.com. No if required. It's free and you only need to put the podcast URL and your email in the form and they will email you new episodes. I use it and I'm happy with it. Use the page subscribe by email.com. Wow. I never knew about this. I never even knew that was a thing. Yeah. That's really cool. So like- that's answering a question we got a couple of weeks ago about how you can get email updates of the podcast. So subscribe by email.com. I like the way that URL can be read two ways. Subscribe by email or subscribe by email.com. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Lopez left a comment on our Google Plus page. Hello. I wanted to listen to this latest episode, but neither my podcast app nor directly downloading it from your site has worked. When I tried on your site, Firefox showed the error. The connection has timed out. The server at blah, blah, blah is taking too long to respond. Do you have any alternate means of getting the podcast, e.g. torrent, or any idea why I'm not being able to download the episode? Martin? Mm. Yeah, well, first of all, we're going to have to uh, sack the sysadmin. Who is that? You. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. Um, Are we going to fess up where you might be able to get some of the back catalogue of episodes? Um, I don't know what you're going to say about that, so I don't know. 
Oh, well, there's a video streaming site that you can also <laughs> oh, get yes. episodes from now. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should fess up about that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so um, this is a rather timely email because our Google, uh, sorry, Google, our YouTube uh, account got unbanned about two weeks ago and we've now backfilled it or it's currently backfilling one podcast a day. So uh, the, the new podcasts are going up on YouTube and you'll find, I think, up to season eight and most of season nine there as well. So if for any reason the site's down, um, you can use YouTube to get to our our uh, uh, podcasts as well. Should we add Don't a link to like and subscribe? <laughs> Sm- <laughs> smash that like button. Um, <laughs> Ding a ling, touch god. the bell. <laughs> oh god, this is so not us. Um, <laughs> could you? Uh, should we add a link to the YouTube channel on the right hand side of the? It's already uh, been done. It's actually shoot. at the top with all the social links on the site. Oh, so if you go to the page, the web, the Ubuntu podcast org, at the top of the page, there's links to all of our social sites and what have you, and and the YouTube youtube icon is in there sweet cool uh, and we've had a couple of comments about the image from our last episode daniel lewin uh, <laughs> try that again it's llewellyn by the way llewellyn. i typed it daniel badly. llewellyn left a comment on our facebook page now that gnome looks just like how i imagine mr pope spending his evenings <laughs> <laughs> and dave s left a comment on our website does anyone else see the resemblance between gnome and brian lunduk who's brian lunduk no, I wondered that, and then no. I looked him up, and I uh, thought, no, because that that gnome l- looks like a character of intelligence and integrity. <laughs> Meow. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, Simon quickly left a comment on our website about how he landed the CV fixes for for VLC in Ubuntu. Um, so we'll have a link to his description in the show notes. This is a follow up to our discussion um, a couple of weeks ago about. Uh, his response to our discussion a couple of weeks before that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> long time it's listeners like will be familiar drama. with this by now. But basically, we wondered about how he got these fixes released. And he told us, which was nice of him. He's written up in the comments of the website how he did all of this. And I've actually been speaking to Simon since. So Simon has now uh, finished his studies for the summer. Ubuntu Mate are sponsoring him to do other work like this whilst he's... Uh, um, not studying over the summer months. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, uh, he's doing really good work. Awesome. Is that the end of the feedback? That is the end of the feedback. And thinly veiled insults. <laughs> if you Let's want. move on. We love getting your feedback. If you've got a comment about something you hear on the show, why don't you drop us an email on show at ubuntupodcast.org. Oh, it's me. (laughs) And that's all for episode 21 as I stare blankly at my screen in front of me. We'll be back next week when we'll have more news, comment and discussion. Although not me, I'm not going to be here. I think that was the end of episode 22, not 21. Oh, that's that's another typo by me. So the next couple of shows should be quite free of typos and mistakes, (laughs) I think you'll find. (laughs) And hopefully full of a guest presenter or two. We'll see. See you next time. Bye. Make it stop.